Hello guys, welcome to the channel. I think I'm Hercules here. Today, I'm going to be starting a new series. Um, it's called It's Never Too Late to Play, in which I review gems, games, that I highly recommend get played no matter how many years it's been. I don't care if you like, man, it's a little old. All the games that's going to be in this playlist are going to be games that do not age badly, just just great games that I just highly recommend. If you are a gamer and you like good games, play these games. With no further ado, let's get into it. The first game we're going to be reviewing is going to be The Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. Now, before I actually delve into it, I'm going to let you guys watch the introduction video when the game first boots up, and then I'll be back to give you guys a synopsis in case, you know, you guys didn't understand what you were looking at because the game can be a little misunderstood. It can be confusing at first. So, I'll be right back. Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord. Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room, away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything, Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son, Isaac, will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement, hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Some pretty heavy stuff, huh? <laughs> so, if anyone had uh, missed it, because I know it's a little bit understanding. The I'm going to be reading from the wiki, so you guys know. Um, but I'll give, I'm going to be saying in my own words, but I like to, I'm going to be reading the wiki, and then I dwell off back and forth. The Binding of Isaac is an indie roguelike video game designed by Edmund McMillan and Florian Hemsels, initially released in 2011 for Windows. So, I didn't play this game until 2014. I didn't play the original Binding of Isaac. I played the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, but then after that, I became so obsessed with the game, I bought the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. And then I bought the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, and then I bought the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus because the game is just that good. And then when the Binding of Isaac Repentance come out later this year for PS4, I will be buying that without a doubt. Um, the game title and plot are inspired by the biblical story of the Binding of Isaac. And then in the game, as you can see, like Isaac's mother uh, is meant to be almost like a call on religion, not like a, it's almost like I'm making fun of it, like the extremism of religion, you know? And it's about how Isaac's mother is, is just listening to this voice and, and, and she, and 
she just makes the decision to, to kill her son. But keep in mind, guys, this is the cool thing about the game. It's being told from Isaac's perspective, as you can tell by the draw. Everything is being drawn out like by a kid. So even as the, even the story in the beginning in the intro is being told by Isaac himself. So always keep that in mind that it's, it's a perspective game, but it's not, even though it's not saying that it's being like, it's like it's almost being narrated. It's being narrated, but it's, it's being narrated by a voice. But every, the person that's narrating it is really Isaac. So upon entering the room, Isaac flees into the basement and that's where the game actually takes place. The story like correlates to the mechanics is like Isaac is going deeper and deeper into the basement as he goes deeper and deeper into this basement. The enemies get harder. The place actually gets darker. It's actually uh, everything that is told in the story because it almost seems like very baseline. Like it's not a lot of story, but every single thing about the game that you see is somehow implemented into a pickup, an active item, a collectible uh, a way you would die, or, or it, it's some in some way, shape, or form. Like here's one example I would give. Mom's knife is a uh, one of the pickups, and you can get the same mom's knife that mom stormed into the room with. Is actually a weapon that you can get, and is actually the highest DPS uh, weapon on the game. Is this and it's, a, it's several things that's like that, like Trail of Tears, and you got like Isaac gets bullied, so you got a pickup like Blood Clot where he's been, I guess, hitting his eye so much and. <laughs> See, it's even explained, and he's been hitting the eye so much that his every other tear is 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 a blood is a bloody tear. And here's the thing: that's that's his weapon. That's how he shoot. That's how you're attacking the enemies through tears. So that bloody tear is actually um, doing inflicting more damage, and it has only come out of the uh, the eye that has the blood clot. So I want to show you guys how you guys set up would look if you were starting a new game. You were to buy, as you can see. You have to unlock several characters. Each character come with different stats and uh, both active and passive items that you can have. Challenges. Each challenge unlocks new items. Uh, the stats. is no stats really. And then you would see what mine is. I currently have the goat head. And I haven't 100% of the game because it's a lot of stuff. But as you can see, I, I have more than enough experience to speak on. The cool thing is all those items change your character and your abilities and the way they shoot and the, how fast you move or how how fast you shoot. It's, it's so many layers to, you can bring up familiars, which are just people that follow you, things that block bullets, you can wear this trail of tears and when I'm sure how you unlock different characters and all that. As you beat the game, you start to unlock not only abilities, but you unlock bosses and you unlock rooms and, and alternate uh, templates for the floors and things of that nature. The Bestiary was a new addition in the Afterbirth Plus and it shows all the enemies that you fight and how often you've killed them, how often they've killed you, and how often you've seen them. As you can see here, we're going through it's so it's so much it's, it's so many enemies on the game and I, I and I'm literally just I'm just not, I'm not even touching all of them. I'm just up 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 down right right you know just a little bit here and there just trying to show off a little bit of the bestiary and that's just one cool aspect of the game is that the level of depth and how many enemies you will see and before I even continue I really want to give a special shout out to the composer and the one who made the entire soundtrack for the game Danny Baranowski I hope I got your name right he did an amazing job with the soundtrack. I cannot tell you guys how many times I'm playing Binding of Ice and I just hear myself doing. Da -da 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 -da. It's even to the point my brothers or sisters will be like, Are you singing that game? And or do dum do dum do dum boom boom boom. It has such an addicting tempo to it. And then the bass kicks, it, the soundtrack is perhaps one of the best I've ever heard in my life. I need y'all to feel my pain. So I'm going to spend the next 45 seconds just going through a couple songs from Darren, D Danny Baranowski. And you guys, I promise you, at least one of these songs gets stuck in your head throughout the day.
All right, guys, I'm really, I'm not trying to like make it over 10 minutes. I wasn't trying to make it ad based or whatever, but it's already been 10 minutes and we haven't even gotten into the gameplay. So let's just actually start talking about the gameplay because we just spent the first nine minutes talking about the storyline, which we got the way this is an important part of the game. We talked about the soundtrack, which is one of the most important parts of the game. We talked about the person who designed it and then we talked about the basic mechanic, uh, how. The storyline aligns to the mechanics now. I'll be showing uh, just random gameplay as I talk about it. And in certain instances in which I need you guys to actually visualize what I'm talking about, it'll be a specific clip correlating to that. But a lot of it is just going to be me hitting on bullet points about the game as you see me play it and watch certain things. All right, guys. So one of the things I really, really want to talk about is... The characters you start us on, in the Binding of Isaac, you start off with the basic character of Isaac. And as you beat the game and complete certain objectives, such as sleeping in the bed a few times, destroying certain colored poops, and <laughs> it's not explaining this game. It's like, what am I doing here? Um, you destroy certain colored poops, and as you kill certain enemies, like once you kill mom a certain amount of times, you want to unlock a whole new area. And once you do this, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want to give no spoilers, but it, it's certain things in the game that you have to do to get to the next step. Once you open that game up, that isn't the finished product. But guess what? You don't have to pay for more product. That's one of my favorite things I like about the game. It lacks any microtransactions, and your character changes cosmetically all the time free of charge and then the cosmetics really align with the character like as i said earlier you can pick up something like called blood clot near the show like a bloody eyeball you can pick up something called trick or treat in which <laughs> the actual visual representation of the upgrade is an apple and then when you and then it's an apple with like a like someone put a hidden blade in the apple like a switch blade and it's it and everything is as if isaac's is actually taking it like you get it because you took the item you took that trick or treat so you bit the apple and then his mouth is bloody like his mouth is all blooded up but he does more damage it get it it's like some of the things like hurting himself like when he hurts himself he does more damage in, 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 a, in a large sense and I, I really like that i like that aspect of the game how you're not just changing it's showing how sick that that, that the how almost how the household is, how sick Isaac's household is, and how like and the way they put it into the loop of the game is just so interesting because you can see Isaac doing things like dressing up as a girl. You can see him being bullied and all the and, and through uh, different scene cuts as the game transition and every single thing is explained through drawings. Like I really think that is really cool how the game symbolizes the both of them a perfect example of how characters change as you upgrade them is you've seen the judas in this um i'm playing greed mode and greed mode is one of the modes it's basically a survival mode in which you go through multiple floors and multiple rooms and it's consistent like once you press that button the enemies don't stop so you have to kill them at a certain uh in a certain time frame you don't have to but if you want nine rooms worth of enemies with you then there you go. Welcome to nine rooms worth of enemies. And I've actually had to deal with that stress of having, like, not nine, but maybe six, seven rooms worth of enemies all bundled at me and charging me at once. But as you can see, I uh, had, uh, uh, it's an active item, which is, which is so many in the game. And it's the top left corner, as you can see. And that active item is, uh, it's, I think it's the book of, um, it's one of the books. It's, it's, it's a bunch of books. I, I can't remember the name. The Book of Belial. There we go. It's called the Book of Belial. And with that book, is basically like it's, you're being Judas, and you already know Judas is like cursed. And he takes that, and as you can see, he gets that upside down cross on his head, and he has like the darkened out eyes, almost looking like sinister. And it's not just cosmetic; it's showing you you're getting stronger. You're getting more like the more I hate this, the more fucked up your Isaac looks, probably the better you're doing. Despite everything we said about the Binding of Isaac so far, we still have not touched on the best thing. The only thing that is in first place that's taken away the award from the soundtrack is the gameplay. It is by far one of the most addictive gameplay loops of all time. I have played over 500 games of Binding of Isaac and I've never had the same game twice. And I don't mean like kind of nothing had the same game. I mean my characters never really looked the same twice. My 
nothing. And if you want the same game twice, it's, it's a literal code that you have to put in. And I'll show you guys that, like in a pause me or something. But you have to put in a code just to get that that same game. If you like that game so much, you gotta you gotta put in that seed. And I've never had the same seed. So it maybe once or twice you'll get like the same upgrade. Like certain upgrades you'll see more often than others. But by the time your game is over, it's gonna be nothing like the last time your game is over. If you get to beat it. So with all that being said, I'm just about done talking about the game. Um, before I actually give it my review, I want to say one last thing about the game, and it's going to be between one or two things. Play the game. Give the game a try. If you like Zelda, if you like difficulty, if you like addicting gameplay loops and, and, and a frequent shift in your character because it's always ever-changing, if you're someone who maybe wants something more consistent or if you want something a little more easy, the good thing about Isaac is you can cut that game on and turn your brain off and you can just have some fun because you can beat the game. I be You can beat the game in less than an hour. You can beat the entire game in less than an hour, but the fun of it isn't in beating a game. It's how many ways you can beat it, how many styles you can beat it. Like it's, it, One game would be super easy because you'll get all the upgrades you want. One game would be super hard. One game would be so hard. And then you'll get to that one room and you'll pick up something like the brimstone and it'll change your whole game up. Um, don't, I, I will say the people that I notice don't really like this game, it's people that don't like the fact that, one thing I will say, I frequently have to look up items on a game to spend how much I know. Like, like example, like, like Book of Belial, I may have known that, but it, it took me a while to really like just re rekindle it because there's so many items on the game that... A lot of people just have to use the weekend. Every pickup isn't a pickup. Everything that you get is not good. Like, example, there's an, a pickup called the Tick, and it takes place in your bottom left. That's your passive slot. That's a slot that just does random stuff for you throughout the game. And if you pick up that Tick, it's called, it's stuck, won't get off. And then it does absolutely nothing for your character except take that spot away from you ever getting anything good in that slot. There's another thing called, um... What is an uh, uh, upgrade called Orbiting Tears? Now, some upgrades are bad unless you pair them with a bunch of stuff. Like, for example, there's a, a move called Orbiting Tears, in which your tears no longer shoot forward. They just move around you. They come out your eye, and then they just circle your body. You think that would sound good, but it's not because they come out at such a slow pace, and they don't do a lot of damage. But if you get that with something, an uh, upgrade called Soy Milk, and it's like, it's like, it makes your tears like a machine gun. And then from there, you're basically an aura of like, you're shielded. They can't get to you. And if you get some damage on that, you can really cause some havoc. But I realize a lot of people don't like the fact that they don't know what they're getting. Like, you, it's, it, it can be good or it can be bad. It, even down to the pills. Like, you can take pills and some pills that give you blue hearts, which will protect your character. And some pills, I make you forget exactly where you are in the map. So, I know I said in the beginning of this video that it's going to be games that I really highly recommend you guys play, but I actually decided through the length of this video, I came up with a rating system and I wanted to use it so bad that I'm actually going to be reviewing bad games. So, if you guys got some bad games you want me to play, I don't care how bad it is, how, some good games you want me to play, I don't care how good it is, you want me to review a game, just let me know in the comments. And before I get out of here, I'm going to give you guys my rating, okay? So, I have a rating scale and it's on the scale of if you're one out of five, is one is some bullshit. Two is it's cool for real. Three is that's tough. I like that. Four, yo, that shit go hard. Five is goaded. Five would be five stars. It'd be a goaded game. I am giving the binding of Isaac goat status. Goaded game. Five star game. Market. I'm not lying. I'm not biased and I'm not faking. The game is a five star goaded game. And that's what I'm saying. That's all I got, guys. Um, make sure y'all like and subscribe. And I think I'm Hercules out. Do it! Bro, play your own song. But I like it. Keep doing what you've been doing. Alright. I'm glad you were here today. Talk out my fear to my nature, a rapness. Bounce like shit, I'm strapped with plasmids. Mega bust up when I'm snapping like a spazzing square. What happened? I'm on a tear when I spit. I be everywhere like I'm Book of the Week.